Hello. I've always found the Duga radar array in the Chernobyl exclusion zone in Ukraine, ex-Soviet Union, to be a very fascinating thing. It was a system the Soviet Union devised to create like an early warning radar network for missile defense and was built during the Cold War. The array was composed of these large tall structures with these bulbous antennas. So I did my best to recreate them and 3D printed them. Having assembled the antennas, I now needed the structure to attach the antennas to. And for this, I just used some square tubing made of evergreen styrene. And again, since this is kind of like an homage or like inspired by, I really wasn't going for pure accuracy. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to accurately model it. So I just went with a generalized tower shape. Having that rough shape built out, I needed to add some little surface details to kind of make it look like it was actually assembled and not just pieces of plastic. So I made some of these gussets that I would eventually add some bolts to. And to add some variety, I went with some round tubing in this kind of like bracing pattern. Speaking of those bolts, I went about creating them out of a little styrene rod. This is my go-to method. It can be a little cartoonish, especially if you cut them a little too big, but I don't have a punch and die set, but I might think about picking one up because I do like the way they look and it gives you a lot more consistent result. After cutting out a few hundred of those little bolts, I went about placing and gluing them to the gussets I made earlier. If this looks tedious, it absolutely was, but it was absolutely necessary. Moving on from there, I started to create some brackets and build the rough general shape for the antennas or the mounts that are going to hold the antennas. For this, I just used some styrene tubes and cut them to length, bending them halfway down or a third of the way down, just to give them a little bit of an angle. Once they were glued in place, I used a smaller styrene rod and bent it around the antennas and glued them to those bigger styrene rods. Happy with the overall shape, I needed to add a little bit of greave leaves on the side of it just to give it a little bit more texture and character. And then I needed to prime it. For this, I picked up some mahogany colored Mr. Surfacer. We're gonna be doing a lot of rust tones, so I figured this mahogany color would help suit or be more suited towards that rusty color, more so than the black primer I would normally use. Once the mahogany primer was down, I followed this up with some whole red. and then progressively lightened it by adding more and more yellow to the mix. Once I got the rough kind of look I was going for, I wanted to add some more texture using some acrylic paints, and I applied that using the sponge chipping method. Well, that's not really chipping, but you know what I mean. I felt like it needed a little bit more than just all rust and the reference photos that I was looking at had a couple of cool interesting ways that the round bits on the actual radar had worn away so i tried to emulate that by spraying some lighter gray colors from the underside on those rounded tubes kind of going for that look where the paint on the underside of those tubes had not really kind of worn away just because it was less exposed then followed that up with a grayish color sponged onto the antennas, follow that up with a more off-white color just to help them stand out against the tower. So here's where I would normally talk about doing the groundwork and my whole process on how I get there. I kind of don't want to do that for this video. I want to take the time in this piece to talk about a greater 
universe that I've been playing around with and building. I really haven't put any words to it, but I, some of my pieces are all connected, at least in my mind. They're all this one bigger world or story that I've been playing around with. Like some pieces being the abandoned hideout under the factory, the truck crash, maybe even the first and second video this, on this channel are all within this universe or this zone, if you will. It's no secret that a lot of my works inspired on or inspired by games like Escape from Tarkov, Metro, Stalker, DayZ. I really am a fan of that genre and entertainment. And I've gone back to that genre so much now that it's kind of made me want to tell a bigger story and make something akin to Boy Light Hobby Time's Wild Imaginary West. And by something akin, I don't mean to just blatantly copy it, obviously, but I mean to create things on a more episodic basis in this self-contained universe that I want to make that's my own. That's obviously heavily inspired upon real world events. Like, I haven't said it, but up until this point, everything that I've been building has been kind of within the Chernobyl exclusion zone. At least in my mind, it's within that kind of area. So I kind of want to tell a story based upon that. And I'm still clearly in the beginning stages. I've kind of planned out, at least in my mind, some cool set pieces that I wanted to make. Again, further telling a story. So I wanted to use this time to kind of get you guys' thoughts. Are you guys interested in that a bigger story? Or are you guys just here to see if I make anything kind of cool and kind of just follow along with the journey? Regardless of what I decide to do, I'm still gonna make whatever the heck I wanna make. I just kinda wanted to voice some of my opinions and thoughts about what I've been doing up until this point without really explicitly saying it. So yeah, I'm kinda interested on making my own wild imaginary Chernobyl exclusion zone. Okay, we're gonna have to shop the title a little bit. Doesn't really roll off the tongue as well. Maybe you guys can come up with some ideas if you guys are interested. So yeah, with that two minute and 45 second-ish elevator pitch out of the way, I wanted to bring it back to this piece. Deep within the Russian held areas of the zone, there had been some rumors being spread around some recent activity being around the radar installation. This area had been cleared out years ago. So any activity was abnormal. So the Russians sent a small contingent to go check out the radar. Nothing had been seen or done up until this point. Only two people were needed. Once arriving to the radar, they found nothing, save for a few things cut away and played with. Probably just locals trying to scavenge some stuff. Once content with their search, they returned back for a boring debrief. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this piece. And that's kind of like the example of what I was thinking about when I'm talking about a story. I'm also of two minds. Do I tell more exposition or do I just leave more and try to make the diorama show more of the story rather than telling it? I figure it's going to be a balance of both and figuring out what, what works. Again, if you guys like it or not, let me know. I really do appreciate you making it this far in the video especially one that has me rambling around so much again it's a little bit different than my usual stuff i'm trying to figure out a way of spicing things up a little bit there's only so many ways you can say i painted the rocks if you get what i mean i'll also try to make these more expositional story-based pieces a little bit more noticeable in the titles so having said all of that back to the building of this piece all i had left to do was place all the figures and give it a coat of black paint. And this one was done. I appreciate you guys making it to the end. I've only recorded this about five different ways. Feel a little awkward. So 
Hopefully I didn't come through too much. Again, let me know your thoughts. If you want more, want less, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch some more of my normal content, click here. And for the rest of y'all, I'll see you in the next one.